How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna pick up where we left off in the last video, where in the last video we took a look at floating static routes, where we were able to adjust the administrative distance on a particular route in order to send it to the direction we need it to go, depending on the reachability and things like that. And I put a lot of emphasis on the physical interface and things like that. Well, here's a, we're gonna take a look at it this in a different perspective where we're gonna add some reliability. So hence the name of this video, reliable static routing. So what exactly does that mean? Well, what that means is we're going to tie in the operation known as IPSLA or Internet Protocol Service Level Agreement. Think of it like just an automatic ping that your device can do over and over and over again to a particular destination. And in the event that that particular destination, whatever it might be, I most likely IP address, comes back as a negative response, which means the ping failed, that ping response failure that's tied to that IPSLE instance is going to be tied to what they call tracking or enhanced object tracking. And if the SLA fails, the tracking fails. The tracking is attached to a static route, specifically the primary static route. So the default route that we're gonna that we've got configured right now between iOS 45 and XR21 on this link right here. This is gonna be our primary path because it's one, two hops away from our destination, which happens to be iOS 8, versus one, two, three, four hops, or in this case here, one, two, three hops from iOS 8. So what we're gonna do, just so everybody's on the same page, let's go ahead and whiteboard this out real quick. When we're talking about how IPSLA works, if I have a router and I have ISP1 and I have ISP2. I have a link to each one, whatever the subnets are. And then behind the scenes, I have some sort of destination. Well, what's gonna end up happening is I have a default route, let's say going this way here with a, a static route or an administrative distance of one and I have a default route going this way with an administrative distance of 10. So I'm gonna send traffic out this way by default. In a situation like this, what will end up happening is unless this link fails, let me actually change this color to be red for dramatic effect. If this link fails, then traffic will go this way instead. Now it'll be redirected this way because this will be the new default route. But unless that link fails, you won't have any local internet routing failover. It'll still send it out the default route but the traffic will be black hole as we demonstrated in the previous video. The pings didn't work, which means network connectivity ain't gonna work. Like, eh, uh -uh, sorry, not gonna happen. So, how do you fall? How do you fix that? Glad you asked. So, the first thing you need to do is understand the concept of IPSLA. The piece that I want you to pay attention to here is SLA, which is called Service Level Agreement. When we go to configure this, we're going to configure IPSLA to be an ICMP echo, a ping. We're gonna ping a particular destination. In this case, it's gonna be 200.2.0.8, iOS 8's loopback address, okay? If this guy dies, for whatever reason, well actually, before I go that far, any further than that, I'm also going, to, I'm gonna schedule it to go forever. So the schedule will say, uh, now and forever. Now what will end up happening is I'll configure tracking. So I'll say track and I'll give it a number like one for example. And then I'll say track the IP SLA of one or whatever number I give it. And what's going to end up happening is I go to a configure this static route right here I add the tracking to it. So the, the syntax would be something along the lines of IP route to zero, zero, let's just do zero slash zero, out to 200.21.45. That's supposed to be a 45, 45.21. But we're also going to tack on the track one, which is going to call this guy. And this guy here is calling this guy. This guy here is monitoring this. So long story short, if the ping fails, 
in the IPSLA when it's pinging iOS 8 loopback. So how do we test that? Well, we go shut down the loopback. It's no longer being propagated through EIGRP, which happens to be the protocol we're using in order to allow this dynamicness to work. If the loopback fails for whatever reason, what will end up happening is the SLA will fail. If the SLA fails, the tracking will fail. When the tracking fails, the static route that's tied to the tracking, or I should actually reverse that, the tracking that's associated to the static route, this guy goes away. When this guy goes away, this guy right here gets injected dynamically. You, me, don't have to do anything other than set this up. Now, the thing that we have to keep in mind here is there's a little bit of caveat, and this is just experience having done this before. When we go do this, we're gonna have to configure a default route, a host specific route, if we want traffic to fail back out towards XR21. You might say, well, why would you need that? Well, if you, because maybe the ISP2, maybe this is a one gig link, one gigabit per second, and maybe this is 100 meg. So obviously you'd want this to be your primary, and this would be your secondary. If in the event that you have the ISP1 connection come back online, you're gonna need a host specific IP address that's gonna be pointing out this direction. Static route, right? But it's going to be configured in such a way to where it'll say IP route to 200.2.0.8 slash 32 going out 200.21, I always keep putting a, uh, a four there, 21.45.21. By doing that, you're gonna basically say, when the IPSLE responds, right? When it goes out this link, or I'm sorry, when the loopback address comes back online, when the IPSLE, come, or when the ping starts to work again out this direction, this static route is going to be what's needed in order for it to fail back over to the XR21 path. It's kind of a weird thing, but you'll see what I mean and then I'll go through the process. I'll bring the SLA back up and you won't see the routing fail back. It simply won't do that. In other words, the, stat the floating static route will maintain. And then um, it should fail over. Now, in the versions of code that I've worked with, it did not work. And this is why I had to I've had to remember to do this in uh, subsequent attempts to do uh, implement this solution. And I've always had to add that static default route that host specific route so that the traffic fails back over. So let's go ahead and walk through this process. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and we're gonna go implement this particular feature. So I'm gonna pull up secure CRT and get this party started. So we're gonna go on iOS 45, which we're already there. I have my two static routes, right? Show, show run pipe include IP route. So we have our two static routes we have our default route implemented, which means now we have to go and implement IPSLA and enhance object tracking. To do that, I'm gonna to go to global config. The first thing I'm gonna do is IP and question mark. We have SLA. Underneath here, I need to give it a number. Now there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with this, but for right now, we're just gonna do the entry. We're gonna say IPSLA one. Come underneath here, we're gonna hit the enter key. We're gonna to to say, what do we wanna do with it? We're gonna type in ICMP, Echo, and what are we gonna ping? 200.2.0.8. And we could tie it to a particular interface, but we're not gonna do that, it's just gonna be sent out. Now we can specify how often we're gonna send it. We're gonna go ahead and say that the uh, frequency, frequency in this case here, will be uh, every three seconds. Frequency is less than the timeout. And we'll say the timeout, in this case here, will be, we'll say the timeout value is gonna be nine seconds. And the threshold, <laughs> um, we'll say the threshold, this is something that's always throw me for a loop. The threshold, in this case here, uh, 60 seconds 
we'll give it uh, we throw a value of 15,000 milliseconds threshold is greater than time <laughs> Wow um, let me do show run all pipe include IP SLA So there is no values. So we're going to set the we'll set the timeout value. Timeout is in how many seconds? Oh, nine. Oh, I put in nine. Um, we'll put nine thousand. And the threshold, we'll put that to be fifteen thousand. Um, put that to be 3,000. And the frequency we'll put in is um, one second. Frequency is less than the timeout. Oh, okay. So it's frequency, timeout, threshold. So we'll do frequency. Hold on a this is always throwing me through a loop. One second. All right, so I just threw some values at this because this has always been weird for me. I could never remember what the how the order of operations here works with this, so I've always used the defaults. So we're just going to basically say um, if any of this fails, and it should fail pretty quick, um, then we'll tie it to that. So we're going to go to the track. Track. Uh, tracking object one and underneath here we're going to type in what are we tracking type in uh, IP and then SLA and then the entry number is one and underneath here we can add in information if we want to but we're not going to we're going to type in IP SLA we're going to say schedule entry number one to start time is now with a lifetime of forever okay now, since I've got that, if we jump out of global config and I do a show IP SLA and I say statistics, we can see that the, the connection's up, right? And it's um, the successes seem to be going pretty good. I don't know what the, so it's actually gonna fail over pretty quick once it detects it. And if we do a show track and hit the enter key, we are tracking, so it's looking pretty good, right? So we're in good good shape there. The next thing for me to go do would be to tie this to a default route. So show run pipe and include IP route. We're gonna go to global config once it pulls up. We'll grab this guy right here and we'll say track one. And if we wanted to add a name, we can say name is gonna be um, whatever. We're just gonna hit the enter key. So now that's going, right? So the default route should be in the in the routing table. So show IP route, and it's the default route is there. Okay. Now if we do a show IP SLA statistics, the ping is working. If we do a show track. Tracking is working, and it's being tracked. Static uh, static IP routing zero, right? So we're tracking that guy. Now, if I go to iOS 8, and I say interface loopback zero, shut down. We're going to go ahead, and that interface is going to shut down. We go back to iOS 45. We're not going to touch anything else. We're going to wait for the SLA to fail up to down. So that's now down. We go show track. The, the routing is now timeout. And if we show IP route, we are now, we should swap over to the connection to iOS 6. That should kick into play and remove that static route. I don't know how long that should take. It should happen pretty quick. And it should fail over to, we'll say static. See why it's not failing over.
but that should fail. Show run pipe include IP route. Make sure it's actually configured. Oh, that's why. It adds one in there. I forgot about that. That's my fault. Let's remove that route. Good thing I double checked, right? Show IP route. Or show IP route static. Now it's going the other direction, right? So now it's working. So that's um, it, it put in the default, uh, put in the other path. So now instead of going towards XR21, now we have a path going towards iOS 6. But the, the ping is still failing, right? If we show IP SLA statistics, it's still failing. If we show track, it's still down. Now, what I'm gonna go do is on iOS 8, I'm gonna type in no shut. Bring that back up, go back to 45. That should, we should get an SLA is from down to up. We'll give that a couple of seconds to detect it from down to up. And then if we go back to show track, it's okay now. And if we do show IP route st uh, static, and now it failed back over. Okay, it did work the way it was intended to, which is good. Now, I've done this in the past where that has not been the case, and I've had to configure a host-specific default route to point out the original default route path. In this case here, it's working the way it's intended to. But let's pretend it didn't. How would you fail that back over? Well, you could go to IP route and go to 200.2.0.8 slash 32 and type in 200.21.45.21. Configure a default route like that, or I should not say default, a host specific static route or a host static route. And by doing that, you're gonna be pointing it out the IP address that you want it to go, which in this case here will be XR21 or the primary path that you want it to lead out. In this case here, it didn't have we didn't have to do that. It went ahead and did it the direction we wanted it to, and everything was good to go. So let's try that one more time, see if it works the way that we intended to. So let's go back to iOS 8, and we're going to type in shutdown again. We'll go to 45. We'll wait for the failure to occur. Okay, that's IPSLA is down. Show tracking is now down. Do a show IP route static. And now we fail over to our primary or our, our secondary path. So it is working the way that we intended it to. If we go back to iOS 8 and type in no shut, and then go back to 45, we should get a, let's just do the IP route static. Let's see how fast it fails over. As soon as we get the ping reply back, or the SLA says up, and there it's already failed back. So it's working the way that we need it to. In the event that it doesn't, don't forget about that host specific static def uh, static route to your destination you're trying to reach so that it can fail back over. So that's basically how that this works. That, that's reliable static routing with enhanced object tracking. Pretty straightforward stuff, but Again, if you don't want to get woken up at three in the morning because some some user can't access what they need to, this is a really good way to prevent that from happening. Until next time, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.